Composing Gloves here, and today we are going to be looking at the first in the FL12 workflow videos. So if you are an expert, you're going to love this. If you are a beginner, you're going to love this. It's just stuff. So basically, if the software gets in your way, it's like it's not helping your creative cause. This is the, your workflow. So you want to find a flow with the software to allow you to be creative and instantly just let things flow out of you. You know, that's, I guess that's why it's called a workflow. I don't know. Post your ideas on why it's called a workflow below. But the goal it basically is to be able to work with the software so that it is your friend, not your foe. So first off, the, the videos will get more and more cool as we go along because I'll be able to explain things, but I need to explain a really basic principle. But before we do, I want to show you uh, one of my favorite shortcuts that I've learned and has since changed my workflow dramatically, beginner, novice, expert, whatever, it will help you. And it is this shortcut. So it, it brings up this menu. It's really, really valuable because it brings up the menu that's usually up here and this menu all at the same time. And what it is, is you could be working out here and doing something. And if you come up here, you have to freaking go back and forth. So I'm not going to explain all the things that this menu can do. I'm just going to show you how to get to it just so you get a little something out of just the first 10 seconds of this video. That is, if you middle mouse click and left click, it brings that menu up. So yeah, when I learned that, I was like, what the freak? There is a sort of learning curve to using it but it's so worth it. I like, I'm constantly going in here and just clicking crap. Like as like the menu's there for like half a second and then I'm working again. Where versus here, I have to come way up here, click it, come all the way back down. It literally takes probably like four or five times longer. And if I misclick something, it happens a lot more frequently up here. So what is the first concept in this series? Well, the first concept is the concept of keyboard focus. So let me give you a really quick example of why keyboard focus matters. So let's say that you are, you are working in here and it's kind of hard to give a practical example. I like it coming up with one right off the top of your head, but when it pops up, it's friggin' annoying. Basically what keyboard focus is, is where your keyboard is, you know, focused, what it's looking at. And it makes, so certain key commands are only valid when they're in certain, when your keyboard is focused on certain things. So for example, with my channel rack selected, I can hit control T and it will activate or deactivate my MIDI keyboard, which allows me to play notes. So that I'm using my, my typing keyboard to, to use that. The MIDI, when I say MIDI keyboard, I meant my typing keyboard. If I hit control T, I'm hitting those extra keys and it is not working. So that's really, really important. Now, if I hit control T, I can turn it on and off here. So let's say that I was like, you know, creating a pattern or something and playing, and I was recording myself playing this MIDI passage and I want to use my keyboard. That's like totally fine. But let's say I'm all of a sudden over here. If I hit control T, no dice. This obviously becomes issues in, in very specific circumstances, which is when it makes a lot more sense, but it's really important to understand this now where your keyboard focus is at. It's really easy. There are three, four, there are three main keyboard shortcuts that you really need to know in order to shift your keyboard focus dynamically. And learning these and the more you get used to them, it's just like all the better for you. So, uh, the first one is F5. F5 is your playlist. Actually, there's four. The fourth one, though, is not really necessary, but it's so freaking cool when you learn about it. So F5 turns your playlist on and off. It will shift your keyboard focus to it. F, so just remember that. F5 is the playlist. And it's also very useful. A lot of things that people do is if you click out here in this outer area where no, nothing's at, it'll bring your channel rack to the front, which is F6. F6 will do that. And so F5's playlist, F6 is channel rack. Now from the channel rack, people will oftentimes click and navigate uh, their, their plugins, a lot of additional things. It's a terrible way to navigate things though, like half the time. If you know the keyboard shortcuts, you are just gonna be way faster at finding what you want, even if your screen has 100 windows on it. Now, if you have that many windows, you should hit F12 and close like all of them, because you're gonna ruin, it, it takes way more CPU to use that. That's another quick tip, I guess. If you hit F12, it will close all your windows and then you save your project like that. That way, next time you open it, it doesn't open a million windows and waste all your time first off loading and then all the CPU following that. So it gets a little faster. So 
uh, F5 playlist, F6 there. So that shifts your keyboard focus. So the playlist has specific keyboard commands that only work here. With F6, you are able to use keyboard commands that are relative globally. However, I could test something real quick. If I hit R, yeah. So there are a couple that carry over through multiple versions that make it a little confusing. So those are two. There's really only one more, and that is Alt F8. And I'll talk about the key commands up there later. But Alt F8 opens up your browser, and that's important because now you can use your up and down arrows and left and right arrows to open and close folders. That a left a right arrow opens it, a left arrow closes it, down will select up and down select new folders. Why this is valuable is say you open it well, you could click each sample, but that's not always the most fun way to preview samples. So you can just click down. And you click up and down, it will automatically preview it for you. So that's another really great way to do things. So those are the basic ways to change your keyboard focus. I could talk for a long time about why this will matter later. But for now, you just need to know that that's how you do it. It is very useful. So you hit F5 playlist, F6 channel rack, and then... Alt F8. You might be saying, why Alt F8? You know, you got me. If you continue going, I'll show you the, the fourth one that I was talking about. So if you put your if you put your keyboard focus in your channel rack, you can hit up, down, and select a new channel. And you probably, to get to the piano roll, you right click and click go to piano roll. Now you notice I'm not going to be talking about what things do really. I'm going to be talking about effective ways to get to things. So again, if you're not familiar with FL and its functions and haven't worked in FL, you go check out my how to make your first song in FL 12. That series will sort of set you straight. Now you might be clicking that, right? Or you could right click and hit P because P has these little dots underneath, which means it's a keyboard shortcut. And that's, that's a fine way to do it, but there's an even better way. You can hit up or down in your channel, Rick, and then you can hit F7. F7 will open and close it. So you, so you see F7, this is banned, blah, 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 blah. If I close it by hitting F7, go up. Now it's my kick. If I close it, open it up. It's, oh, my gosh. It's so good. So good. And you see it activating. And then so we have F5 playlist, F6 channel rack. F7 is the piano roll for the selected channel. But then you think F8, oh, browser. But no, they did plugin picker, which I guess is kind of cool because you, if you know your plugin picker really well, you can dynamically grab plugins. But I don't like it for a number of reasons. First off, if I, uh, oh, it kept my focus. Sometimes I lose my keyboard focus when I use this option. If you hit Alt F8, it's doing fine right now. But I've had occasions where all of a sudden my keyboard focus is like off somewhere else. So that's ne that's never very fun. But yeah, the plugin, plugin pickers are a cool way to go to, for a workflow. It's, I mean, if you know where your stuff lines out, you can use it. So we'll talk about various workflows and things later. And of course, my ways are not necessarily the law. They are ways that I've just found that work for me. If you have better ways or different ways, go ahead and share them down in the comments. I am open to all ways. That's keyboard focus. Subscribe. Follow me on or support me on Patreon because when you do that, I'm able to make more videos that will benefit you and videos that are useful to you. As we get going, this is like going to really just start impacting the way people work. So I'm kind of excited about this. Uh, yep. If you have any questions, drop them down below and have a blessed day. Way too much oomph for a beginner, for very, very first beginning sound designer. So this is a great place to start. You are going to get out of this series uh, a whole bunch of techniques. You're going to learn what all the buttons and knobs do and stuff like that. But the goal is to show you the application of these buttons and knobs. Not necessarily a sound design with. That's the second series that will follow this one day. Maybe not.